Good evening, Father Zahar. I'm so excited to be with you this evening. I tell you what, God is busy with each one of us. But I want to just encourage you this evening and just know that as God is busy just equipping us and growing us up, remember that we are one body of Christ. But as individual churches, local churches, we have a responsibility. We have a function to fulfill in the body of Christ. And one of the functions that we have as Father's heart is to start pushing back and restricting what Satan is trying to do in the area where you stay. So I want to just encourage you and I want to just say, please continue praying over your area. Start building the faith um, around your area and building a wall of protection over your home, over your suburb, over your school. Because I believe that that really is a function that God has called us to do. And so as we get into tonight's session, I want us just to open up in prayer. Lord, I pray right now for Father's heart. Father, I thank you for every single member. I thank you, Lord, for every single person that is connected to us. Lord, I pray that as we come into this time of worship together, Lord, that we will realize that there is a plan and a function for each one of us. Lord, I thank you for what you are doing in and through each individual in Jesus' name. Lord, right now, I thank you, Lord, that you're going to move by your spirit. And Lord, that we are going to see the power of God in our lives like never before. And we thank you for this in Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said, Amen and Amen. Well, Father's out, I want to just welcome you. All right, family, I just want to say that we love you. We care for you. Um, as, as we all know, the travel thing is still a restricted thing. Uh, we can't get to you like we would like to. Um, it doesn't even help me coming into the cities and moving around or sending the team because we're actually not allowed to meet. And so it really is a difficult situation. And so I just want you to know that we are praying for you. We are um, standing in the gap. And we are genuinely taking the responsibility, all right, for every single member. I know that some members feel like, listen, we're so distant right now. I understand that, all right? But even the local churches in your town feel the same way right now. Okay, so we just need to understand that this is the time that we're in. And I just want to encourage you to say, listen, from our side, we are there. We are praying. We are standing in the gap. And we are genuinely trusting God for a supernatural move of His Spirit across our nation. And God has given us a unique uh, structure in that we are scattered across the nation. But I just want to encourage you as we come into this new year. Um, I want to encourage you that God has got something in store for each one of us. And the minute we can, I promise you we will move. All right, we will move. As soon as we allow to get to the gatherings again, we will call the people together. Okay, so we are really just trusting God and believing God and just trying to pray that each and every one of us will be strengthened in our faith and in the call that God has for us, even though we are restricted and we are limited. All right, so, so right from the onset, I just want to just put out a call and say this. If you do not have a church, if you are not connected to a church, I would encourage you to come and join us. Come and join our digital church. All right. All you need to do is to go to fathersart.co.za and then just put in there to enroll as a member. And then what we will do um, every few months, we will then um, accept to have a meeting where we will sit down and just accept all the members into fellowship. But remember, the minute you have filled in that form right now because of this COVID situation, we take it as you are a member and we are responsible for you. The minute you fill in that form, we immediately take it as you are in and we are going to help you. All right. And so we take that responsibility the minute you have filled it in. So I want to encourage you, if you haven't become a member, you don't have a church. If you have a church, please stay with your church. All right. Stay with the calling of that church and what God has called you to do. But if you do not have a church, I would encourage you and I would like to just ask you to consider joining us. Because we have members right across the nation. Because God has given us a vision to create an umbrella over this nation. Okay? So I would like you to consider that. All right, so let's just uh, pray as we're going to come into this time of worship right now. 
Lord, we come before you in the mighty name of Jesus. And Lord, we pray that as we come into this worship time, Lord, I thank you that you are going to move by your spirit. And Father, I pray that we just open our hearts and lay our lives as sacrifices before you. Lord, we thank you right now that you're going to do a mighty work in and through each and every believer in Jesus' name. And Father, I pray that as we come into this time of worship, Holy Spirit, that you'll come and minister to us, that you'll come and work in our lives. And Lord, that you'll bring us to the place that you have for us in Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said, Amen and Amen. Over to you, Jean. We'll see you in a few minutes.
precious is the flow that makes me white as snow no other fount i know i am washed i am washed i am drenched in love
but it won't prosper. When the darkness falls, it won't prevail. Cause the God I serve knows only how to triumph. My God will never fail. Yes, my God will never fail. I'm gonna see your victory. I'm gonna see your victory. Victory, I'm gonna see a victory for the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm gonna see a victory, I'm gonna see a victory for the battle belongs to you, Lord. Whatever battle you might be facing, just know that it belongs to the Lord. And you are gonna see a victory. There's power in the mighty name of Jesus. Every war he wages, he will win. I'm not backing down from any giant. Cause I know how the story ends Yes, I know how the story ends I'm gonna see a victory I'm gonna see a victory For the battle belongs to you, Lord I'm gonna see a victory victory for the battle belongs to you Lord confess it tonight I'm gonna see a victory I'm gonna see a victory for the battle belongs to you Lord I'm gonna see a victory I'm gonna see a victory for the battle 
every wall crumbles right now before you and that we will see a victory in our lives whatever we are facing we proclaim victory that nothing will stand in your way to accomplish that which you need to do in our lives come and have your will in your way God thank you Jesus Lord we come before you Lord, we thank you that as we have just had this time of worship and we've been able to come into your presence, Lord, I pray that you'll bring us into a place of destiny and purpose. And Lord, that you'll bring us into the place that you have for us in Jesus' name. Lord, I thank you that you are in control. And Lord, that you are going to do a major work in and through each believer in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen and Amen. Oh, folks. I'm really, really blessed to be with you this evening. I know that God is going to do something amazing in and through our families and in and through our lives. And this evening, I just want to deal with our giving. All right. I believe very strongly that every single time that we have church, we need to get taught on our giving. We need to get taught around the financial aspects and elements around our lives. Why? Because finance is literally the anchor, the thing that everything is evolving around. You don't, can't do much without finance in your house. And so I want us to um, deal with our tithing this evening. All right. It is tithing week and the week that's, that's to come is about our tithing. I want us just to once again remember the importance of tithing. All right, and we have dealt with this many times, but remember that we have to keep on being reminded of this. And let me tell you why I do it the way that I do it. It's not the fact that I'm nervous that you're not going to tithe. What I'm nervous of is, is that you are not going to tithe in faith. That is where my problem is. There are people that are just committed. They will just keep on giving finance. You know, they believe God's word and they just keep doing it. But remember, the key is this, not just to give, but to give in faith. Every time you give, you've got to give in faith. You've got to give with this idea, God, you are my source. You are my only source, and I'm giving in faith right now. If you don't do that, you are limiting your flow of finance in your life. You are limiting the power of God to flow in your life. The more you give in faith, the bigger the flow is in your life. And so Malachi chapter 3 verse 10 says this, bring the whole tithe into the storehouse, all right, which basically means 10% of your income. Now people have been debating whether it's net or gross, it doesn't matter. Take 10% of where you are at, where your faith level is, okay, and give that to your local church. If you are part of Father's Heart, you give your tithe to your local church, to Father's Heart. I am a member of Father's Heart Digital Church, I tithe to Father's Art Digital Church, okay, and so every time um, I get finance at the end of the end of the, the month, okay, as money is coming, I see what money came in, and then I sit down and say, God, I'm going to uh, give this finance over, and I, I'll do it electronically, and so what I do is I put it out, and before I click the send button, all right, before I do my EFT, I sit down and I say, God, I thank you that as I am giving, I thank you, Lord, that your word comes into play. What word? Read it now. Yes, you, Malachi 3.10. It says, and uh, give the whole tithe into the storehouse so that there may be food in the house. Test me in this, says the Lord, and see if I will not open, throw open the um, floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there will not be room enough for you to store it. In other words, you can get to a level where I believe God so much that I have such an abundance that I cannot physically use everything that's coming. Are we at that level? Most of us are no. Because we have not started to push in on these levels. You see, as you grow in faith, God's going to give you more. As you get more, you tithe bigger finance. Excuse me, why do I need to tithe? So that there is food in the house. So that there is spiritual levels in the house. So that I can learn the biblical principles. The spiritual principles. 
And so what happens is we need to be able to know that there is spiritual food for you when you need it. And so that is what it is. And the Bible does give clear things, take care of widows and orphans and, and things that the church needs to take care of and which we make sure that we are involved in. Okay. And if there is stuff that needs to happen, then we will assist wherever we need to. So I want you to know that it is really taken according to God's word. And there are some requirements that we have to do. But I, as a believer, when I tithe, I need to have my faith connected in it. Whenever I give, I have to have my faith connected in it. So right now, I want to challenge us. All right. Number one, you can't afford to skip tithing. That is like a non-negotiable for me. All right. Spiritually, if you're going to mess with that, you're going to mess with your, your protection. Because God says that he will rebuke the devourer on your behalf if you tithe. So there's certain things that Satan will be out of your life just because you have tithed. All right. So secondly, whenever we do tithe, we have to do it in faith. So let's pray. Lord, I thank you right now in the name of Jesus that as we give, Lord, we are going to give in faith in Jesus' name. Lord, we thank you right now for the tithe. And Lord, as we give our tithes in the next week or two, Father, I thank you that we are going to give it in faith. Lord, we are going to trust you. You are our source and you are our only source in Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said, Amen and Amen. Folks, the banking details are going to be on the screen. And please, I would ask, um, if you are giving from an international bank, all right, if you're outside of the country, please just go onto our Facebook page and you'll see that there is a... Um, uh, pay fast uh, donation thing that is for your tithes and giving if you're outside of the country please if you are in the country I really ask you just to use EFTs it is the cheapest and the most effective way just use EFTs and just transfer um, your giving um, into the bank account okay as far as possible all right let's get into tonight's topic I'm really excited about tonight's topic because I believe that it's something that is slightly misunderstood. People have not understood this, and I believe that God has given me some insight to this to help us get this thing settled in our lives. All right, I'm dealing with the topic persecution for the word's sake. Now, you must understand, if you read the Bible, there's persecution for Christ's sake, for the gospel's sake, and then there's persecution for the word's sake. These two are different things. What is persecution for the gospel sake or for Jesus? It's basically me saying, I am a Christian. I believe the Lord Jesus Christ. And somebody might martyr me, kill me, persecute me because of my stand as a Christian. Okay, so, so that's where the problem is. Okay, so they're going to, they're going to, I'm going to have a problem because I'm standing for, uh, for Christianity. Now that's being persecuted for the gospel sake. But what does it mean to be persecuted uh, for the word's sake? That's slightly different. And I'm going to deal with that this morning, this morning, this evening. Okay. And uh, I wanted to tell you that it's been a, a lovely weekend here um, in the Eastern Cape. <coughs> Excuse me. And so right now, um, even in the evening, it is lovely. It's a lovely, lovely time in the Eastern Cape. All right. But let's get back to the word. Now. Persecution for the word's sake. It deals with the following issue. It deals with the word of God that has got to be uh, nullified. Okay, now let's go back to Genesis chapter 3. Now I'm going to read quite a bit of scripture and I'm going to re wrap it up nicely so that you have a very clear understanding what this is about. Genesis chapter 3 verse 14 to 15. So the Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, you are cursed more than all cattle, more than all every beast of the field. On your belly you will go and you will eat dust all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman, between your seed and her seed, and that seed is capital, that's between Jesus Christ. He will bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. That is a prophecy about Jesus on the cross, his heel was bruised when he had to lift himself up, okay, on the cross to breathe. So it's a prophecy about there's going to be a war between Jesus and the devil, and 
Jesus' um, heel is going to be bruised, but Jesus Christ is going to bruise Satan's head. Now, why does it say that uh, Jesus Christ doesn't eliminate Satan? Because God only eliminates Satan right at the end of time. All right, but let's move on. So I want you to see something, that there is a clash. There is a defined, uh, defined line, and it's very well defined, good and evil, Satan and, and God. The battle is about Satan versus God. Now, here comes the big thing. What is the battle about? What is Satan's biggest plan? What is he trying to accomplish? He knows he's never going to beat God. He knows that his time is limited. He knows that judgment is coming. So what is the plan? What is his focus? His focus is very simple. To get the human race not to believe God. Okay? As long as we don't believe God, we will never activate what God has for us. And so the issue is this. If I can get the human race not to believe God, that's all I have to do, to doubt God and not to let them to believe God's word, they are never going to get what God had in store for them. Let me give you an example. When Satan came to Eve, he did not say, God did not say this. It's a lie. Believe me. What did he say? He said, did God really say that? All that he had to do was bring doubt and a move off God's word. What did God say? And move it off. And so I want you to see something. That that is Satan's primary objective. Is to get God's word not to be true. If Satan can get God's word not to be true, mankind will not believe in God. And if, God, if man doesn't believe in God, then Satan wins. He takes a whole lot with him to, into hell. And so this is the primary function that Satan has got. This is his agenda. This is how he is going to um, try and win the world. Now, what has been interesting, though, is that through the decades and through the ages, he's never been able to disprove the Bible. Now, that's really important. Because if you know with all the cynics out there and all of the Antichrist spirits that are running around, they have never been able to disprove the Bible. And so this is establishing the fact that God's word is actually true. God's word does actually carry some power. God's word does actually bring about change. God's word does have the ability to shift things. And so this is very critical because at the end of the day, Satan's objective is to get the word off um, the truth, to get God's word into a place of doubt. Will God really do this? Will God heal me? Will God come through for me? Whatever it is, if he can get us there, we are not going to receive anything that God has. The Bible says a double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways and he will not receive anything from God. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. And so we understand that we need to believe God, believe God's word in order for us to have the victory. So let's go and see the power that you have. If you believe God's word, if you actively believe God's word and use God's word. 1 John chapter 5, verse 4 to 5. Remember, I'm just laying a foundation for where I'm going. For whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that we have to overcome the world. The victory that we have to overcome the world, our faith. Our belief in God, our belief in God's word. Remember that our faith comes by hearing, hearing by God's word. So God's word is going to help me get the faith. My faith is going to overcome everything that this world is going to throw at me. So how many times have we been in a situation where you need a miracle? No matter what the miracle is, if you've ever been in that situation, you need faith to overcome that situation. And that is what God is saying. Okay, that you will overcome the world. You will overcome the world by your faith. But look at the next verse, verse 5. Who is he who overcomes the world, but he who believes that Jesus Christ is the Son of God? 
Who's the guy who's going to overcome? The guy who actually believes the word of God. Believes that Jesus Christ is who he is and will do what he says he will do. That person will overcome the world. Okay? Now, where does the battle come? Remember that the battle comes in that Satan has got to stop us from believing the word. Right? That's the root. That's the bottom line. So let's look at what Mark chapter 4 verse 17 says. Now, Mark chapter 4 was the parable of the sower. The seed, which is the word of God, would go into different terrains. But I want us to look at this particular one. Because this is critical. This is the agenda that Satan is using on mankind. Verse uh, Mark 4, 17. And they have no root in themselves. In other words, they, they are not born again. They are not very solid in God's word. Root means they are solid in God's word, grounded in God's word. So in other words, they don't have too much of God's word in them. And it says, and so endure only for a time afterward, when tribulation or persecution arises for the word's sake, immediately they stumble. Now, what does it mean to have persecution and tribulation arise for the word's sake? Let me explain. How many of you know that if I'm going to trust God for something, I need to know what the scripture says? Let's take a physical healing. All right, I'm going to trust God for a physical healing. I'm trusting God for, for healing, let's say I have flu. I'm trusting God to heal me from this, this, these symptoms of flu. All right, remember, you never lay claim to the disease. I have flu. You never say that. You say, I have the symptoms of flu. I reject these symptoms. You never say, I have flu, because then you'll have it. So I reject these symptoms of flu. And so you need to sit down and say, go get your scriptures. So you go, number one scripture, by his stripes I was healed. Number two scripture, the spirit of God that dwelleth in me quickened my mortal body. Okay, and so you get your scriptures. Now I'm believing God for my scriptures. You know, I'm like that person who has got, I don't have a lot of word, but I've got my few scriptures now. And now I'm going to start believing God. But here comes the issue. My symptoms get worse. What is actually going on? My faith is being challenged by a persecution as well as a tribulation. In other words, what I'm believing God for and what I'm seeing are not matching up. They're not lining up. And the battle is, do I believe God or do I keep on going with the symptoms? And this is what happens so many times. You believe in God and it actually looks like it's getting worse. You are trusting God and it doesn't look like God's anywhere near. You are believing God's word. You've got your scriptures. You're trusting God. And while it's because it's getting worse, you've got to understand that that is Satan's plan. Persecution and tribulation is going to come on your path because of the word, not because of you. Because you are standing on that word. Why must Satan stop you from getting that thing solid in your life? Because the minute that is solid in your life, he loses the battle. The minute that thing is secure in your life, you will overcome the world system. You will get your miracle. So your battle is to sit down and be aware that if I am believing God for something, there will be persecution and tribulation that's going to come because of the word that I'm believing God for. I can tell you numerous occasions where that has happened to our family. Every time you, I, I would sit down and say, but God, you promised. God, you promised, and I'm not seeing your word in action here. And we had to push through these things. We had to believe God. We had to sit down and constantly, at, at one stage, it was literally we had to take communion every hour just to get our hearts and our minds focused on what God promised and not to get deterred and to doubt God's word. So I want to tell you something, that battle is not always easy. All right, that process is not always easy. But you need to understand that you are going to have tribulation and persecution because of the word's sake. 
You see, the Bible says in James chapter 1, verse 21, it says, Therefore lay aside all fil filthiness and overflow of wickedness, and receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to save your souls. In other words, I need to get the word inside of me so that my soul can grow. Now, my soul is my will, intellect, and emotion. Now, why must my soul grow? The Bible says that I prosper as much as my soul prospers. So, I need to get the word so that I can overcome the things of the world. So that my soul is strong. In other words, that I'm thinking right, that I'm believing right, and I'm feeling right. I'm bringing every thought into captivity into God's word. And so as I do this, I'm going to overcome everything that Satan throws at me. So let me make it simple. I believe God for something. I get a scripture. I'm believing God for a miracle in my life. Sometimes all hell will break loose around that particular area. You see, it's funny. It's the thing that you're trusting God for that you get the attack on. And so you're sitting down and you're saying, God, I'm trusting you for this. But I'm getting the exact attack on the thing that I'm trusting you for. Then you must know that that is persecution, tribulation for the word's sake. Why am I getting persecution for the word's sake? Because Satan has to get me off the word because the battle is between God and the devil. Satan wants to prove God wrong. And God says, I will not be proven wrong. Because my word will be there forever. But if the believers believe my word, they will have victory. And so that is what God is busy with. That is the process that God has for us. And so when you come and all hell's breaking loose, you need to push through and say, God, I am going to be established in your word. I'm going to stand strong on your word, no matter what's going on around me. Now, let me tell you something. When that battle, that persecution, tribulation comes... You've got a choice. You see, the one, look at, go back to that scripture quickly. And let's go to Mark. What happens to the person in this? Listen to this. Afterwards, when tribulation, persecution arises for the word's sake, immediately they stumble. In other words, they immediately just quit. They go, yes, no, this thing fell apart and I'm over this. I can't do it anymore. But if you're a true believer and say, God, I'm going to believe you, you're going to go, when all hell breaks loose, you go, God, I don't understand, but I'm going to stand on your word. And then all of a sudden you get a breakthrough. And so saints, I want to encourage us. Persecution and tribulation will come because of the word's sake, not because of you. Right? Don't go there. And so many times I did it myself. I'd sit down and go, geez, I must have something seriously wrong. In my life. Sin. Gee, I must have a lot. Even though I ask God to forgive me my sin every day. But for the extent of stuff that's happening to me, it doesn't make sense. Until I realized it's for the word's sake. The battle is not about me and you. The attack is not because you've done something right or wrong. The attack is because you are standing on God's word. And Satan has got to try and disprove and get you to doubt God's word. So saints, I want to pray this evening. And as we come around the word of God, I want us to pray. And let's seek God for a supernatural move of his spirit. Let's ask God to help us understand that when we are believing his word, when that persecution tribulation comes, we need to know that it's not on us. But when we break through that, we will be men and women of faith. Let's pray together. Lord, I pray right now that we will understand that the persecution and tribulation that comes, Lord, when we stand on your word, Lord, help us understand that it's not because of us. Lord, not because of sin in our lives, not because of lack of faith, but it comes because there is a challenge and a war on your word. Lord, I pray right now that you're going to help us Lord, to understand this. And Lord, not to give up, not to stumble, not to leave your word. But Lord, that even if all hell breaks loose, we will stand firm and we will stand strong. And Lord, we will believe you and we will see the miracle and we will see the breakthrough. In Jesus' mighty name.
And everybody said, Amen and Amen. Saints, I'm really excited when we deal with topics like this because it gives us revelation. It gives us understanding. It gives us a sense of victory. You know, that you don't need to sit down and question yourself when this stuff comes. When we understand something, we can go through it. And so I trust that this is one of these topics that are going to help us understand our battle, understand the warfare that we've been going through, and understand the victory that we are going to have. Because the Bible says when we get through this, the Word of God is going to overcome everything in this world system. Okay, and our faith in God is going to shift everything around us in Jesus' name. Well, folks, as we close, I just want to just encourage you, have a wonderful week. All right, go out and just know that we love you. We are praying for you. We are there for you. And we are in this thing together. And we love you. We love our nation. We love what God is going to do. And just remember that we need to stand together, stay connected. All right, I really want to encourage you, please, to be part of our Wednesday evenings. All right, our Zoom session, that's the only real point of contact where we have with individuals right now. All right, and also, um, if you're a business person on Monday evenings, all right, where we are part of Kings and Priests, we meet together at 7.30 on Monday evenings for, um, for Kings and Priests, where we minister to one another. And if you're a business person, just get ready. We'll send it out on the Zoom links. But on Wednesday evening, that is where Father's Heart should be getting together. All right. Anybody can join. If you're not part of the church, you're welcome to join. But Father's Heart, I'm asking, let's get together on Wednesday evenings. On those Zoom sessions where we minister to one another, get to know each other and be there for one another. We need to support each other. We were not created to be islands. And so I really want to encourage you to be part of Wednesday evenings. All right. You'll get the Zoom links on Wednesdays. And people have asked us, why don't we just use one link and, and just keep it permanent? All right, the reason for that is, is because of the hacking. All right, we do not want people just coming on that we don't know and we, you know, and, and just cause havoc. Please, it's just to, to try and protect and bring a little bit of security into this. And so I want to encourage you folks, let's get connected, let's stay together and let's pray for one another. All right, and so from our side, we want to say that we love you lots. And uh, yeah, unfortunately, Prince isn't with me tonight. You know, he does the morning sessions. He likes the communion ones. But I want to just tell you that from our side, we love you lots from the team. And I want you to know that I want to encourage you wherever you can. I know we're busy. I know that people are really busy now with all sorts of things. We're working very hard. But where you can, pop into the evening sessions. Get one or two more topics. Learn something on the way. Because this is how we are going to grow and this is how we are going to get there. So from my side, I want to say God bless you. Have a wonderful evening. And I'm going to see you tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. for communion. So God bless you. See you soon. Amen.